Yes. 
Welcome to this fusion session of Cape Breton's finest Celtic music with Wendy McIsaac and Mary Jane Lamond. I'm Daniel Bartholomew Poyser, Symphony Nova Scotia's artist in residence and community ambassador. I'm going to be your host for this evening. We're going to have some more music in a moment, and then afterwards we'll have a Q&A with Wendy and Mary Jane. But first, we'd like to acknowledge that we are on Mi'kma'ki, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. Thank you and enjoy. Thank you so much. Uh, it's really wonderful to be here with all of these incredible musicians. And you can imagine it's rather strange to have gone from a year and a half of almost seeing nobody except my sister and my parents and um, to being here now tonight and uh, strange but wonderful, I have to say. Uh, this is Kathy Porter by my side here. Well, I think it's going on for 25 years at least that I've been working with a very special musician. Please welcome to the stage, Wendy McIsaac. I was telling a story about a song one time on stage, I forget where we were, somewhere in the States, and Wendy said, what was it, hashtag Gaelic... Killjoy? Killjoy. <laughs> So here's a really sad song for you. <laughs> this is an immigrant's lament, although I must point out, in the name of like scholarly uh, accuracy, that the majority of poets who arrived on the shores of Nova Scotia in the 1800s wrote songs of praise of Nova Scotia and that they were very glad to be where they were and um, have land to themselves and be uh, out from under the power of their chiefs and the landlords, but this isn't one of them. <laughs> this one they're talking about, it's from the North Shore of Nova Scotia, and apparently I have heard stories, the North Shore of Cape Breton, going up from St. Anne's Bay up to the base of Smoky, and a lot of those people arrived quite late in the 1840s and 1850s, and they didn't get the best land. And they arrived, a lot of them, they've heard stories I've heard from local people there that they were arriving in August and trying to plant potatoes for that winter and the potatoes were freezing into the ground and they were starving. So that's what this song is and I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I don't know if I can say anything more to redeem myself, but uh, it's a very beautiful song and uh, yeah, I'm grateful to have had it given to me. Okay. 
Thank you so much. So I do have some cheerful songs. This is a children's song, actually, and um, there's a hen complaining that although she lays eggs every day, all the attention goes to the milk cow. And then there's a dog barking. So feel free to bark along. <laughs> Gaelic dogs go bow, bow, bow. Thank you so much. It struck me as I was singing that, thinking about the collective amount of um, musical training and education that it took for me to get up here and bark on stage. 
but it was fun. Um, so now, Talik Nabenya Gadama, The Blue Mountains Lullaby. And this was actually commissioned by Celtic Colors, I think in 2014, and a songwriter from Scotland called Brian O'Hara, and a Gaelic songwriter from Cape Breton called uh, Jeff McDonald, Gary Donawalk, uh, came together and composed this song uh, of talking about the Blue Mountain, which the Blue Mountains we can see out of the window of the back of our house in Cape Breton. And the mountain is welcoming the gales as they arrive and responding to the song of them building their houses and them singing their songs. And then the mountain is reflecting on how so many people have left and the beautiful language that the mountain was used to is being replaced by another language, of course, English, and people are leaving. But the mountain in the end says, I will stay here forever and sing a lullaby to the gales. So I'm going to send this out to my parents in memory of my parents who, there's a line in the song um, that says, Gundukat Aram Shain, that gave me, they gave me singing, and those are the people who gave me singing. So this is for you, Mom and Dad. <laughs> Oh, 
I'd like to thank Stephanie Nova Scotia for inviting us, and uh, particularly thank you to, um, well, to Scott and to the orchestra for being so supportive, and I mean that, like, very, very much. Thank you so much. <laughs> and so here we go with uh, Sleepy Maggie, and safe home, everybody. Thank you all for coming out.
Well, thank you so much for that wonderful performance. I'm here with Mary Jane Lamond and Wendy McIsaac. And, you know, we have a couple of questions for you just to have the opportunity to get to know you a little bit better. So the first one is your, your partnership in music. How, how did that come to be? Like, how long have you been together, working together, and how long has the partnership been? It's uh, been a while. It's been a while, 20 some years. Yeah, we really started together in 1995. 95, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Mary Jane asked me. She had been uh, touring with my cousin Ashley McIsaac mm -hmm. when he was just kind of getting on the upswing of his career there. Um, and then you, I think you got approached to do a gig on your own, but you didn't have a band. <laughs> That's right. I got a, that was funny. I was still at university, and I got a call. I was just graduating, and I got a call from um, Harborfront Center mm -hmm. to sort of say, well, what would, you, what would you charge to come and play? It was like, I don't know. I've never done it. <laughs> <laughs> Never performed. Wow. So, well, like parish concerts and stuff. So our first performance was in front of 2,500 people. Oh, wow. At the outdoor space at Harbor Front. I guess we got through it. Yeah, we did. Yeah. And how was it received? Really well. That's There's great. so many key partners in, in Toronto. So, you know, we had a lot of those folks in the audience. Oh, Harbor Front's in Toronto? Yeah. Oh, okay. I know yeah. exactly where that is. Yeah. yeah. Exactly where that is. Amazing, amazing. Yeah, so wow. then we just, uh, it, it happened, you know, that I think at that time there was just this wave of interest in East Coast music mm -hmm. in Canada. And so my CD came out as a project really for Gaelic learners, but got nominated for some East Coast Music Awards. So it just started happening from there. Right. And then, um, yeah, so we toured a lot together. Yeah. Where are some of the places that you toured? A well, lot in the United States. A lot in like the United States. Like a lot. States. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we did a lot of driving through there. I think at one point we figured out that we had either performed or driven through 48 states. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> that was just one tour. So, <laughs> a fair bit in Scotland, of course. Okay. Um, 
I mean, I feel like for a number of years there, I was in Scotland at least once a year, maybe twice a year. Mm -hmm. um, we were in Austria last, in Germany. Brazil. Brazil. Mm -hmm. I was in Japan with Ashley. Yeah, a lot of places. I was about to say, what's the furthest away? But I guess I mean, Japan is quite far. And then... Brazil was pretty far. Yeah, Brazil was pretty far as well, Yeah, too. pretty far, yeah. That's right. So what is it like performing with an orchestra then? How is that different, or how is it the same, or what, what's the experience like? I think it's different for both of us. Well, it's just, it's amazing to have this sound behind you, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And, uh, and it's an acoustic sound, it's not an electric sound, which often on stage you're just getting sound in your monitor, so mm -hmm. that alone is such a different thing. Um, and I don't know, it always keeps you on your toes because sometimes the arrangements might be slightly different than what you've played for years and years on the road. So for me, um, you know, I find myself trying to find new places to, you know, play some different lines while Mary Jane is singing. But yeah, it's a it's a wonderful thing. And especially doing it here in Nova Scotia, because over the years, I've gotten to know a lot of the members. And so it's just right. great to see them and play with them. I would spend a lot of time counting bars. <laughs> <laughs> and why is that? Well, because you can't you know, like when it's a band and you're close together on stage, there's, you know, if something, if I go off track or something, you know, then I could pick it up. And mm -hmm. it's, you know, four people or five people or whatever on the stage and you can do, but if with that many people on the stage who all have to read off of charts, if I mess up, I can't get back in. Right. I actually stopped the orchestra. Was that the Edmonton, <laughs> Edmonton Orchestra? <laughs> It was Evan. I had to stop Forget. them. Yeah. yeah, at the Winsbeer Center. <laughs> and we started a song, and I just thought, I'm not going to recover. So I said, hold your horses. Hold your horses. That's great. <laughs> or something like that. I said, this is just going to be a train wreck if I keep going. So. And that's absolutely great, because it's when you're putting two different styles of music together, it's important to have flexibility for both. Because that's not how orchestra, you know, orchestra is so, um, it's, like, it's exactly what you said. They're reading off the charts. Yeah. Right. But if we're going to be performing with you, then we have to have flexibility to, you know, allow your style to breathe and sing the way that mm -hmm. it needs to. Absolutely. Yeah. I think. This, um, and you're right, because the style that we play is so different. It's not like a song that has first chorus, first chorus, first chorus, bridge, first chorus. You know what I mean? It, that's pretty structured. Like what we do has all these A and B parts and sometimes even more. And a lot of times um, even like well-rounded musicians don't know which part is the A and the B. Oh. Absolutely. Yeah, so it's, it can be kind of tricky there. So finding your place and, and making sure you get in at the right time is quite important. I remember doing a concert of Celtic music uh, with an orchestra and a really, really great <laughs> Celtic band. And you know all of you know exactly, you know this was great. And nothing nothing went wrong, but I just remember during the, uh, I, oh yeah, it was the, bar, it was the Bar McNeils, it was the Bar McNeils. And during the rehearsal, you know, I have my chart I'm, and I'm like, okay, let's start at measure 143. And he's, where is that? And then one says, oh, I think that's where Sue, is that where she's going down to church? No, she's coming back from church. And then, like, it was something yeah. in the story of the song. Yeah. Right? This, oh, yeah, okay, so it's on the way to church, and then we go to church, and then this is, and they, they were measuring the music in terms of the, where they were in the story. Yeah. And I was measuring bar numbers. Okay, we're going to start on beat three. So I was the one counting bars there, just listening, <laughs> going, like, okay, I hope I got this right. Okay, I hear church. Okay, we're okay. We're okay. Yeah, story, it, so. it's a completely different approach. And mm -hmm. I, I was actually, I wish I brought it down. I have a, I made notes for one of the songs and I was trying to, I was putting in bars, but then there's a very distinctive line at the intro. Mm -hmm. So I wrote down, da, 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 da. And that's, so that'll, I'll remember that now, that that's, and then I start. Did you actually and then write D-A, D-A? Ba, 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 <laughs> in another part. I actually wrote D-A-H, 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 D-A-H. Okay. And then the next part that I reminded myself was B-A, 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 B-A. <laughs> it's funny, because that's what I had to do as well too because they said, we're gonna do um, this section of the song, we're gonna do it a number of times, and just listen. And I had to stop counting. I had to actually stop counting and just listen. And when you listen, it's like, it's right there. Yeah. Because the music is actually, like, music works, right? The story works and the harmony works, so it was actually, it was very interesting. So it worked out great. Yeah. So what is still, after all these years, what is still special to you about this music for each of you? What still captivates you? Ah, nothing. You <laughs> <laughs> well, it's dance music, you know, right. and that's how I learned how to play. I, I learned from an instructor, Stan Chapman, but um, 
I think I was only about a year or maybe two into learning and I was playing for dances. Mm -hmm. You know, you just got thrown right into the fire. And when you play for dances, you learn um, your tempo so well, you know, because people don't want to dance too fast or too slow. So you have this window. And so that's one thing, you know, you get get that. But like because we played for dances so much, we weren't the focus of attention like in the right. symphony show. Right. Um, everybody's having a great time and dancing and that it's just such a magical thing that you're giving people music and joy to dance to and mm -hmm. yeah for me for the song tradition it's slightly different but I think for me it's more um, it's the experience of having learned these songs and although performing them at the symphony is certainly a lot different than singing them in kitchens and I take a different approach to the singing I may have to sing to a big room and mm -hmm. it's different but I think for me it's just like that community thing too, like it's so precious that these songs were held on to despite the language declining so much and that people kept singing them and sharing, and older singers sharing them with me with no problems, like mm -hmm. just go to their house and they're so happy to share their songs with you and that's pretty special. And it's, it's a precious tradition, I think, the, the, music, the Gaelic tradition of Nova Scotia, I think it's pretty precious. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we're very lucky to have you both with us to oh. hold that tradition and to embody it so beautifully, uh, we're, we're just very lucky. So thank you for being with us here. This well, evening. thank you for inviting us. Yeah. Absolutely. We'd also like to thank the government of Canada and the province of Nova Scotia for their generous support of our fusion sessions.